Welcome everyone. Uh, it's great to be here and to be able to support such great conference. Uh, I hope we will all learn a lot of new stuff and we want to contribute to that. Uh, so, especially for this uh, occasion, we prepared a dedicated application. Uh, but before that happens, uh, let me just quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Adam Novacek. I'm the founder of the Asisoft, and this application couldn't be created without the help of my team, uh, Wojtek, Rafał, Łukasz, Michał, and Przemek. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and before we start, there is one little magic trick that I want to show you. If you will take your lanyards and you will open them, you will see that you have pen drives here. So, little gift from Asisoft. This should be nice stuff, 16 gigabytes. So, I hope you'll use it and enjoy. So, mind blowing, right? Okay, so now since I have your attention, <laughs> uh, let's discuss what we want to show. As the description for the presentation was um, maybe not that explanatory during the, or, like, the original idea developed a little bit. So what we want to show you is a simple quiz application uh, that is Angular 2 based. And we are using AWS IoT platform uh, to which we connect over web sockets. And because we need more stuff than just web socket, we are using MQTT protocol. And which, what is nice is that all of that is out of the box supported by AWS. Uh, so in theory, this application is backendless. Um, so what you will see, there are two kind of pieces of the application. One is the client application that hopefully you all can access if everything works well. And you will be able to log in with custom nickname. And all, you, all that you will be doing, you will be answering questions that will be pushed to your device. And what I'll be showing here is kind of presentation server that will allow us to see how many people connected and what are the answers, hopefully, in real time. And at the end, we'll do some summary charts. Uh, we'll see uh, if you like the questions or not. Mm, and then I'll try to discuss a little bit uh, pieces of the code that we used. And hopefully, we'll have time for like, questions and answers. So, <laughs> architecture is very simple, uh, and that's, I think, beauty of it. So, uh, what we will have here, uh, it's not visible that well. So, we will have your devices that will be connecting over WebSockets with MQTT. In here, this block is symbolizing the AWS IoT. The whole routing and traffic will go over there. And the traffic will be going across my application that I have running here. Uh, that application that I will be running is just pure front end. There is no back end. My browser is connecting directly to uh, IoT, the same as hopefully your phones or other devices uh, will connect. Um, so I think the best is to start with Dima. So let's see how that works. Uh, anyone interested, please access this website. Uh, I'll wait a little bit. So basically, it's asisoft.mobi. Uh, don't be surprised. What you will see, you will get redirected to our asisoft bitbucket IO. Uh, so, the application is hosted directly from Bitbucket pages. Um, it's not running on my laptop or anything. And this is just a static content hosting that we're using. So, basically, anything would do. You could even host it from S3 
uh, as static content of, from anything else. Um, so hopefully people um, got connected. So let's see how that works. OK, we see uh, some icons connected here. In here, I have this running in the browser. So I will connect as well. Yeah, here I am. So all of these guys here, uh, these are you. 54. Maybe we can wait for some more. Uh, let's see how much we can grow. Uh, th th this is the first real production test that we're having with this application because so far we were testing with like 10 or 15 people. Uh, so <laughs> let's see how much we can handle. Um, the thing is that you can be joining while we are uh, going through the quiz. Uh, so right now people are connecting. You see there is this guy dancing and waiting for question. Uh, it's still popping, so maybe let's wait for a moment. As we see, 111, 12 people connected. Awesome. So late for let's let's wait a little bit. Maybe we'll hit two hundred. <laughs> yes? Is there a question? Can you refresh? I'm not responsible for bit bucket. Uh, service. My my laptop is hosting it properly, so. <laughs> okay, let's see how that goes. Uh, you can be connecting during the presentation. We can then rerun it to see how it goes. So let's start. Uh, so if I'll go uh, here and start with first questions. Hopefully your devices got updated with the question. And now we see people who are answering. And this chart is showing real time the count of the answers over time uh, that people are answering. So let me answer as well. Once you answer, you move back to waiting for question state. Uh, we can see that some people still hasn't responded. So in here at the top, you can see the progress bar. We are expecting to get till the end of the line, which means everyone connected responded. Uh, over there, you see like a little bar chart. So you can have live preview of what people are using. So right now, we can see that in, it's interesting. Majority is using Angular 1, which probably is kind of expected. Uh, so let's wait a little bit more. We can see that basically the idea is uh, that you get randomly generated color and the first letter of your login. After a long debate, we resigned from full nicknames in order to not have some nasty words here listed. <laughs> I know you developers. So we, we, we're almost done. Oh, we hit 200. Yeah. And it's still working. Uh, so 200 and counting. Let's try moving to the next question. Uh, so probably only those who <laughs> kind of use Angular 2 might get here. <laughs> Let's see. The race started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Join us, I serve if you want to know. So. Let's see. It's still counting. Okay. Uh, in here, we can see the difference. This was the first question. Now we're going from the beginning 
and the speed of the second questions, how people are address answering. So responses are coming quicker. Uh, so people got used to the application, right? Or maybe question is simpler. Uh, so let's try going with next one. Sorry, I clicked somewhere else. <laughs> I can see we have a lot of funny people here. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> 225, nice. Basically the idea is that with this approach, I wouldn't be surprised if it scales to one million because we don't care about scalability here. Uh, this is the problem of AWS IoT platform. Uh, so think about this that, uh, let's say there are examples when someone is running a local Node.js application, hosting WebSockets, it's super awesome, right? We have demo, 20 people connected, yeah. But then try going production, right? Now the whole problem, how to scale it. You need to think uh, whether you want to create a cluster of, of those node applications to handle the traffic. Maybe you will go with Docker containers. There are gazillions of possibilities, each with its price, both in dollars and time. And in here, Basically, from the perspective of front-end people, I think this is quite a nice approach because you don't really worry about this. And you have like real-time stuff. Um, so uh, I, I think it is really kind of awesome idea to try out. So let's try going with next question. And let's see if you can do it any faster. <laughs> The other benefit of this approach is that it binds nicely with all the technologies that you will hear about or already heard about. Uh, uh, it all goes like quite similarly with the IoT thing. Um, it, will, it goes really nicely with the upcoming next talk from Ben about RxJS. I strongly advise focusing on that great technology. We're using parts of it. Uh, for maintaining the flow of, of the data. If we have time, I'll go in deeper into uh, code aspects of this. Uh, so maybe uh, since we're running out of time, let's move to the next question. Yeah, bring it on. Yeah. Green one will be, this line will win. <laughs> uh, so if in any case, if for some reason some of the devices did not get updated, that's probably like a, some kind of bug in our code, but IoT's traffic is moving around. So uh, we could even see that I think that will be interesting. I haven't thought about that. So we'll sign into IoT account, our Asai Soft IoT account. Yeah. And we'll switch to AWS IoT. And we can go here, connect as another device. And let's subscribe to the channel that we are listening for, which is ng Poland server. And you can see that there are your responses coming in. So I was not lying. 
there are different things coming. Uh, I see some people were trying to break the application. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, wh what we see here is that I accessed uh, MQTT client that is provided by AWS, and now I can listen on that channel that we are using. If I would connect to, uh, for example, another channel, which would be ng Poland client, we can switch here, and in here you will see stuff that I'm sending. So, if I'll switch here and go to the next question. <laughs> Let's not always be only about coding, right? It's growing. So the thing that happened here, you can see that what I did when I clicked next question, I sent out the question uh, that your device received as a, as a command. Uh, it contains the question ID and the list of answers. And the application that you have listed, installed on your phone, or installed, that you launched, is basically choosing the ID, sending this out together with the question ID. and. Basically, this guy here is looking at the response and capturing it, keeping the, uh, all the statistics. Uh, so maybe let's finish, and we'll see. Oh, probably too small screen, so thank you. You're awesome. <laughs> thank you for uh, taking part in this. Uh, so uh, w what we can now see... Uh, this got a little bit too small, but we can see the count of the responses, a uh, little charting of the, for each the response we have. And basically, we could start over. Mm, how we are handling this right now, what would be quite interesting, I don't, let, let's see what happens if I refresh this page. Uh, I hope that it will not blown away. So this will be interesting. What happened here when I refreshed? Because we are not keeping any state. We used the approach of event sourcing. So each of the actions that you were sending was stored in local storage. So I'll show it. This is quite interesting. So in here we have, whoops, sorry. I probably should have, like, make it any bigger. Sorry. It's kind of. So what we have here is a super secret stuff that we use to connect to IoT. Uh, we have our list of questions that we're using. We could extend this easily and send out, this is not a problem. Uh, however, what is interesting here, uh, you can see this is, or maybe you cannot, but uh, this is a type register. So basically, all those applications that we send uh, are stored as is in the local storage. And there is basically no state from the perspective that uh, we're not keeping list. We keep them to have that state at the given time, but when we refresh the browser, we take that event store, we run our code through the whole list of actions, and we get the, to, the, to our current state. So what should ring a bell right now is Redux, and basically we have our own simplified version of Redux here. Uh, that basically is rerunning all the actions from the event log. And one of the items we haven't managed to do is to plug in Redux and test with that. Um, so, 
what, what, what we could do right now, for example, um, is we can restart the application and basically we would go from the beginning. So what you see right now is after restarting, we hit you again and asking for registration. So uh, there was a request for registration and here there will be like a spawn of messages, each of your devices responding, yes, I am still here. Uh, so now, for example, we can see that uh, not everyone was, like some of you, disconnected, right? Um, so this is basically the application uh, that we wanted to show. Let's now switch back here. So before we'll dive deeper, I still have, I think, enough time. Uh, key challenges that we faced here. Uh, first thing was, in general, I don't think like web sockets are still that widely used. So getting all that WebSocket enabled backend is sometimes tricky. Uh, we were trying out different solutions similar to AWS IoT. That works the best due to due, two reasons. Uh, one is uh, MQTT protocol, which is very efficient. This is a binary protocol. So uh, for this type of stuff, it is better than IMQP or Stomp. Uh, but th this could be used as well. The other problem was that uh, there is a nice browser-based MQTT library already there. So basically, integration works out of the box. Uh, uh, I can show you what is, what is required to, um, to get this up and running. Uh, I'll try to make that code bigger. One second. So... But basically, uh, if you're not familiar with Angular 2, the way we structure this, we have our main component and module. And inside there is like presentation. This is that piece that I was showing you. So for example, this is not like the most beautiful code. We still would like to refactor that before we will share with you. Um, but basically, that main concept is here. So if you, any one of you were looking at the Redux, Maybe I'll make that presentation mode one second. So in here, each action that was sent, uh, we check and we react to it, uh, performing some action on the front end. And that works really nice. But what I wanted to show you uh, was basically, one second. Where was that file? The connection. And that connection is implemented in the way that this is basically all that is required. We are using MQTT library. So if you're interested, this is MQTTJS. This is quite widely used stuff. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking out if you want to play with this stuff. Uh, additionally, we have uh, basically from what is interesting, a little site helper uh, that basically is using AWS SDK to create, create a signature uh, for the connection. So this is basically even like one-to-one -one copy of uh, AWS documentation. Um, and then in here, all we do, I'll switch to presentation mode. So <clears throat> I'm not super sure, probably Ben might have a different opinion on that, but we create two streams and the, we use subject for that. So output is anything that we will want to send out. So we just do next and we send out that over WebSocket using RxJS and input is something that we receive. So all this class does is it signs the connection, opens MQTT connection on top of the, uh, of the WebSocket. We subscribe to that channel that I showed you, ng-poland. And then on any message, we basically push this to the stream. Uh, so 
from now on, anything that's happening in the application is handled by RxJS, and, uh, subs and we subscribe to it as you would subscribe to any HTTP call. However, this is happening over time. So in that sense, it's way better than promises because promise happens once and you have to create new one. In here, you create the stream, and from now on, you don't care about WebSockets. It's just the RxJS streams that you're interested in. And the same way we subscribe to the output. So, and that's it. This is the whole connection for IoT, right? The rest is Angular, strictly Angular. So, if we would go here, or maybe let's start with uh, the client version, which is way simpler. So basically what it does, it has a similar uh, client connection as we had for the server, and how this is used in the code is that when we initialize, we subscribe to the events, and for any upcoming event, we uh, issue the update state and depending on the comment that we got, so if this is ask for register, we send the registration information. If that's question, we update the view uh, and show the question, right? If it's done, we show that tick mark, you're awesome, and for any restart, we start over. And as you can see, this is quite simple code. Uh, it's like just a little bit more than 100 lines, and that's the application that you were running on your phone. So together with that IoT connection and this little trick with state updating, we get to a very nice kind of flow of the application that can happen in real time. We just react uh, in that manner to the changes. And what could happen in here, uh, as I said, we had not enough time. If you're interested in this type of stuff, I highly recommend checking out NGRX store, which is basically Angular-based implementation of Redux. And Redux is basically about this. Uh, uh, state updating, the only difference in our case is that since this is a simple application, we keep state in the component. So we're not passing this around. We don't care about immutable objects and stuff. Uh, but the real Redux is not, not a lot more than this. And this is the, the client application that that you've seen. <clears throat> this presentation was a little bit more complicated because we are implementing that event store here. So for any upcoming message, we first update our store in local storage. So we store that action in the array. So update store is tremendously simple. We get the list, we push to the list, we save the list. Uh, that definitely could be implemented better. Uh, and update state in here is exactly the same. Uh, we react to any incoming actions. Of course, in a uh, more production real environment, we would have a separate uh, command for the actions that are coming, and we would have a separate events that would represent the facts that happen. But in this case, we simplify this with one type of action. And as you can see, uh, basically, depending on what we're doing for registration, we're finding the user. If it already exists, we do not edit. Uh, we update the question. We have some stuff on answer that's doing some statistic updates. This should be probably uh, kind of extracted uh, somewhere else, as this code got too, too long a little bit. <laughs> uh, but it's not that long, right? It's still 300 lines of code for quite nicely working application. Um, so <clears throat> this is more or less how it looks. Uh, I would like to get back to, to this. So as, as I discussed, one thing is WebSockets, but WebSockets is just WebSocket. You won't do too much with that. You need some additional layer like MQTT. So we had some research on do, deciding on the message queue protocol. And what works the best for the browser is MQTT, uh, in our opinion. Uh, binding it all together with Angular 2 was a little bit playing, because when you look at the code, it's like, ah, 
simple, right? Five lines of code, but getting there takes some time. Uh, the other problem we had uh, so far, we were developing applications in Angular 2 using System.js. We see huge movement towards Webpack, so we're moving to Webpack at the moment, and uh, that's causing some problems with the build, uh, and we want to fix that, so maybe Angular CLI will help us with that. Um, we plugged in material design components for Angular 2. Uh, that is not yet that greatly implemented yet. Uh, we had a lot of discussion on how we want to keep the state, whether we want to keep, we, want to make, we wanted to make that application as simple as possible. So uh, uh, we came up with this state flow, as I showed, and we wanted to try out some RxJS stuff, and that is really awesome. So as already discussed, we uh, I already kind of said that. So lessons learned uh, at the end. Um, kind of pros that we like. Uh, so we think that WebSockets are cool. The whole MQTT for the win, yeah, that, as you could see, that works awesome. Uh, as I said, alternative would be Stomp or AMQP, but there is not really uh, that great support for both sides. So if, for example, you would like to run Hornet uh, MQ, that they have WebSocket support for Stomp, and Stomp has nice JS library. So you, depending on your architecture, you could pick and choose different technologies. And what is important, these are not fresh technologies. These have been already there, and for any IoT device that you will be using, most likely it will be using MQTT protocol for, uh, for that. Another thing, as you could see, AWS IoT works really well. This was the first time we tested this with that many users, and it worked out of the box, right? Uh, we had almost like real-time delay, uh, and we were not really configuring anything on the IoT platform. So I highly recommend considering this for any kind of front-end application that you would like to do because you strictly implement front end, connect with that, struct, that, that architecture to, to IoT, and you have scalable application. Um, what we already knew about Angular 2 is really cool. Uh, we, well, I personally uh, developed for a while with Angular 1, and I can see that Angular 2 is way better with TypeScript, with better structuring, less, per less performance headaches that there were in Angular 1. So if you're considering, that at least that's my personal opinion, uh, if you're considering whether to start new project in Angular 1 or Angular 2, at this stage, with Angular 2 final, I highly recommend going with Angular 2. Um, like three months ago, maybe it would be different because there were still release candidate versions and they really messed badly with, with the upgrades. So we were going through hell trying to upgrade from b beta 10 to, through RC7 to final version. Uh, but finally, it's worth it. And we definitely uh, would like to check Redux or an NGRX store for application state management. That might be quite interesting, especially that everyone is recommending Redux. Um, so what didn't work that well for us is uh, material design for Angular 2 is still, I would say, alpha. So not something that I would recommend going with for now. Uh, however, the idea behind those components is really great. They are fully implemented with Angular 2 in mind. So there are already some components there, but it will still take some time to be fully usable in production, I would say. Our Webpack configuration sucks a lot. <laughs> and the worst part of it is that the application that you used, for some reason, weighs 18 megabytes, which is crazy. Uh, but that definitely can get lower. Uh, I think that this should be between one and two megabytes with Angular 2. So yeah, you pay the price of the size, but you do not use Angular 2 for implementing quick websites. Uh, you rather use it for bigger applications. So by adjusting the Webpack configuration, 
um, you shouldn't have any problems with the size. Uh, we haven't managed to use the Energy RX store, which would be really awesome. Another thing is that we use NVD3 for the charting, but we probably could get better results or better animations for this kind of view with directly using D3. Uh, so maybe at some point we'll extend that uh, just for fun. Because of the stuff that this was be like implemented over time uh, before the conference, uh, we were doing, uh, unfortunately, we are missing tests, and that sucks a lot, and we have no excuse for that. So the other thing is that we are still kind of uh, have newbie approach on the RxJS. Uh, we're trying to deep di dive deeper and deeper into this, uh, so I'm looking forward to the RxJS presentation. And possibly discussions about this, because trying everything is a stream approach uh, doesn't really make sense, especially with a lot of architectures on the back end, like uh, Akka framework or similar stuff, uh, really looks promising. We'll be trying that out definitely, so uh, maybe at some next conference we'll be able to share that architecture. And there is always not enough time to implement everything we want. <laughs> um, and yeah, at the end, uh, of course, we're hiring. Uh, so if you're interested in Angular 2 or we doing some backbone marionette stuff as well, uh, we're over there. So please come by and I can explain or tell you more about stuff that we do. It's not only front end, uh, but Java, Python, Golang, uh, basically heavily deployments in the cloud. So that's, that's what we do. 